Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We rejoice in you this morning. We celebrate your love, your mercy, your goodness, your kindness. Our heart rejoices in you. It's another beautiful, wonderful, glorious morning here. We thank you. What can we say to these things? Sing your mercy anew every morning. Great is your faithfulness towards us. Our heart rejoices in you. We glorify you. Thank you, Father, for the sound of awakening once again. Thank you, Father, for the coming together of your prophetic demand and requirements for our day. You're bringing us to the place of truth. You're opening our heart again to the sound of your spirit. We celebrate you. We celebrate your voice. We celebrate your coming. We celebrate your heart desire. We declare this morning once again, Lord, that we have come. What a heart, O oh God, in the form of an altar with fire, O oh God, incense rising unto you. You are faithful, Father. Thank you. Thank you. That through our lives, O oh God, our prayer will become an offering accepted in your sight. We bless your name. We glorify you. We pray once again that, Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. May we have the understanding of the comings of your spirit, of the requirements of your demand for this new day. May our prayer be that which is aligned to your demand for this glorious day. Or may we not be drifted away. May we not be anxious. May we not be captured by fear. May we know that when we come before you like this, that it cannot but to be well with us. May we understand, oh God, that you require a people to pray your heart, to pray your mind, to release your desires and your intention into the firmament so that your will once again will become a reality within the hearts of men and women across the land. We thank you, O oh God, that our life, O oh God, is one that is positioned on the ram, on the mountain, that we only pray that which we hear and see from your presence, that our prayer, O oh God, is not one motivated by our earthly desire, but that we can see into your heart, we can see into the heavens and pray down and birth your counsel. So we thank you once again this morning that you will use us to express your heart, to express your desire, that you will use us to manifest your glorious intentions. Have your way. Take your place, Father. I pray that once again, oh God, there will be a fulfillment of your word. Yes. I pray, oh God, for my brothers and my sister that we will all kneel before you, the Father of heaven and earth, in whom the families of heaven and earth derives their name. I pray that our hearts will be filled with the glorious riches, that we may be strengthened in you, with you, through power in our spirit man, in our inner man, that Christ, you may dwell in our hearts through faith, I pray that you and I, brethren, will be rooted and established in the love of God. Yes, that we may have the power together with all the saints and all the people of God that we will grasp, we will understand how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of God. It's my prayer that you and I in this season will be part of a company of them who are rooted in the love of God, in the agape of God, that we will come to the realization that there is nothing we can do for God without us being rooted in this life, in this nature 
of his of his values yes it is my prayer that we will have a better and a clearer understanding of this love that surpasses all knowledge oh what a place to be friends that surpasses all knowledge that now in him you will be able to comprehend this love that is immeasurable that this love that is more than beyond imagination that our life will become yes one with the nature of God with the glory of God I pray that we will be consumed in the reality of heaven's prophetic desire and design I pray that we will not go beyond that which has been written but our prayer will be confined to the realities of the demand of Christ for this brand new day that your life and mine will be the express effulgence manifestation of the father's desire it is my prayer this morning that you and I will be conformed into the image of Christ as Christ is being formed in us through the travailing of his intentions and desire it is my prayer this morning that in all things we will stand worthy before him we will stand holy before him we will stand faithful before him we will stand committed before him that our life will be the breath of his desire in the earth ha huh. that you and I will become the very expression of the pleasures of the father i pray that this kingdom is kingdom will be formed in you that is where will become your desire will be that which you long for that you will be awakened in the truth of Isaiah 50 and 4 and 5 the morning by morning it will awaken your ears to listen like one that is being taught that he will awaken you to listen to respond that every morning as he awakens you you will be changed into the likeness of his desire for the day that your prayer will not be that which is selfish and self-centered but that your prayer will be lord that i may be more like you that i may become more what you have ordained me for Ah that you will strip yourself as I strip myself of every anxiety of every fear and doubt and disbelief and neediness that in Christ you know that you don't need all of anything that all that you need he supplies your need that your heart that your eyes is mainly focused on his desire for your life that you have been created for such a time as this that what that what that that which define is will is what you want to conform to and that's our prayer this morning that father all that you have programmed for our life all that you have desired and designed before time began that in this brand new day the 11th yes of the month that there's something you want to see manifest in the earth that there's something you want to see carried out in our life in our space among those oh god that we're going to be meeting that we want to become the fulfillment of such yes that is our prayer today oh god the lord we see beyond just our own physical need we see that which is your need you say where the treasure of a man is that's where their heart will be lord you are our treasure as our prayer and utterance this morning is coming from your throne Lord we pray this morning that we become sanctified holy worthy able to stand to carry your intentions because it is one thing for us to know your intention is another thing for us to be the right vessel to carry it so i pray this morning oh god that our life will become a fulfillment yes a desire a longing to carry to carry to express your desire to carry yes your intention build us build your house in us build your home in us find a place where you can express your desire through our lives we ask you this morning come dwell in us reign in us speak through us move in us and move through us let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart the meditations of our hearts the things that we interact with 
when no one knows, when no one sees the things that no one can see, the things that we are struggling with, that the meditations of our heart, oh God, will be acceptable. Wow. What a dimension of prayer. That the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart become one. What a place of honesty. What a place to move mountain. That our prayer is not to one born out of hypocrisy. But our prayer becomes, yes, the very burden of God. That our prayer becomes that which is in the heart of the Father. They said, Daniel, from the day you began to set your mind to understand and pray, Daniel came into oneness with a heart desire of God. After 70 years, the people will return, but they needed somebody to engage heaven in prayer. You see, nothing happened by chance. Daniel was tracking the word of God and the knowledge of his word positioned him to pray accurate, effective prayer. You see, you would have thought after 70 years, I mean, that is enough time to forget. That is enough time to go into all kinds of, you know, your own thing. Yes, and that was that was the life of the people. 70 years, we're talking about seven decades. Seven decades, that's a whole lifetime. But this man will not just give up. He will not just allow all right, events, situations, circumstances. God knows all kinds of problems that must have taken place during those 70 years. But there was a man, his name is Daniel. He was a prophet, yet he was a technocrat. He wasn't just an ordinary kind of a prophet. He wasn't just one of those you know, lazy, hungry looking prophets. He was not a charlatan. No. He was a technocrat. Well informed. He was engaging in the king's you know, assignment. Yet his heart was open to God. May God make you and I. A company of Daniel in our day. That while we are about our day to day activity. That while we are about our day-to-day -day activity, while we are running to make money, while we are running to build business, while we are running to keep our home, houses, marriages together, while we are running to make sure that our kids, our children are in school and they are doing the right thing, where we are running to seal that, that next deal, while, in the midst of all of that, yet Daniel was in tune to heaven. It was in tune. It was not out of tune. May God make us. May God bring us to this dimension of life. You see, it's a hard thing. You see, you are in this world, but you are not of this world. Daniel was so involved with the, with the matters of Babylon, with the matters of the king. Only God knows the kind of things he was doing in the palace, but he must have been so busy. But yet, he was in tune. His frequency was to heaven. He was tracking the seasons of God. He understood the timing. He understood that the reason why he's in Babylon was for a reason and a purpose. You see, this is what prayer is. You know, I, 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 I read something that, that still astounded me about the life of Nehemiah. The Bible says when the king asked Nehemiah, what do you want me to do about this thing that troubles you? Before Nehemiah answered the king, the Bible says, and Nehemiah prayed to God, yet he was standing before the king. He prayed to God and then he answered the king, yet he was standing. The Bible never said he went to pray and then came back. He was before the king. Ah. Friends, there are dimensions we have to track as God brings us to a more, di a more mature reality of what prayer is. Like I said, prayer must go beyond just what we do. Prayer must become our second nature. Some people have a mindset about, you know, what you know what prayer is 
That they have, they have to position themselves in a certain place. They have to go to a certain place. Yes, we can do all of that when we have the time. But our prayer should be... You see, when you're a person of prayer, it, 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 it brings you closer to God. Every prayer you make in the spirit of truth amen, and honesty, it closes the gap between you and heaven. Prayer closes the gap closes the gap it closes the gap the more you pray the more you get to know the mind of God the will of God as you engage God they reveal more to you Friday as I was praying I mean the Lord began to show me and reveal again to me the things I need to do even though I thought I was in the right place the Lord said no I need you to do this I need you to relocate back to Cape Town I need you to be with your kids I need you to be around your children that's prayer that can only be birthed in the place of prayer you see you will not understand the mind of God until you begin to engage him in the place of prayer then they begin to show you you have you begin to have a you know it's like things that are not clear even though you think they are clear to you but the more you pray the more you see oh wow oh i never saw that yes that is what they do to us in the place of prayer you have a better and the more you do that amen your transition becomes amen more effective your journey becomes more accurate amen your your interaction with life amen become more fluid become more you understand become more intense and of course become more you know engaging you are you are not burdened you are not captured you are not way down you are where you need to be there's more to prayer friends than just petitioning in heaven about things when you petition heaven amen heaven begins to interact with you about their desire you see Saul thought he was going to look for his father's ship he collided with what with destiny that's what happens in the place of prayer oftentimes what you take to God amen as a request is not what you come back with <laughs> it's not what you come back with you come back with something even better something even more authentic something you are, you are not even aware of but it's been part of your life but you can see it so in the place of prayer they open our eyes of understanding and that's why i read that scripture it's important that we understand amen the place and position we need to pray from let me read it again in case don't be tired of this scripture please friends don't get tired don't be tired let me read again ephesians chapter Chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives their name. I pray you would derive your name from this order of life. I pray that out of his glorious riches, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner man they're building our inner man in this season there's a building there's a construction taking place you see there's an empower, emp, emp, empowering you know you know building project that is taking place every day don't be tired don't be tired what is coming will require a man a people who know how to pray amen the bible says those who know their god that is why amen we've been talking about the place of awakening prayer is the sound of awakening they are awakening us amen to realities to realms to dimensions amen yes there's an awakening. There's a sound of awakening. Morning by morning. You read that scripture. Morning by morning. Yahweh. Morning is a, is a day. Is a, is, you know, represents, symbolizes, amen, a new thing, a new reality. When the morning dawns, amen, you should be expecting new instruction from heaven. Whenever you wake up in the morning, amen, or it's a, it's a prophetic morning to you, you understand? You should be expecting something brand new. You should be expecting new instruction, amen? If, if the morning dawns, there must be something new, something fresh, amen? Heaven is emphasizing. Heaven wants you to come in to never live your life in ignorance. My people perish. It is unbelievers. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You know why? Because they were not attentive. 
to the speakings of God. So they miss his coming. Morning by morning, he awakens me. It's my prayer you'll be awakened. I'm reading Ephesians 3. So that Christ may dwell in your heart. First of all, he pray, Paul is praying to the church. This is a prayer to the church. He's praying that they may be strengthened. All right? With power. Through the spirits in their inner man. Then he went further and says, I'm praying that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Oh God, what an experience we must come into, friends. What a place we must dwell. What a place we need to camp. God, I want you to dwell in my heart. I need you to dwell in. I don't just want to have a make-believe faith. Okay, well, I believe. But when reality dawns, when things start happening around, it's like, where, Jesus, where are you? What is going on? No, when you are certain, you are assured, amen, beyond every reasonable doubt. You see, that changes your posture. That changes, amen, your, your lifestyle, your condition. That changes your response, amen, your response. I pray that Christ may dwell, may dwell in your heart, you know. It was Paul, the same Paul who prayed to the Galatians. He said, I'm praying that Christ be formed in you. You are my children of whom I've traveled again in birth. <clears throat> Friends, prayer is work. Prayer is, is, is a business. If you don't know, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's a, it's a, it's a big business. It's a real business. Prayer represents, amen, the order of the economy of God. Nobody, amen, can, can succeed in life without, amen, a prayer life. Without a prayer life. This is the reason why today, all right, the body of Christ is being invaded by all kinds of foreign teachings and doctrines. Demonic teachings are invading, you understand, you know, the body. We're hearing people now saying that, you know, the teachings of Paul are, are not, you know, an error. I mean, these are people who, who control thousands of people. All kinds of lies have been pushed into the body of Christ. The altars of God are being removed. <clears throat> the altars of prayer are being removed. Jezebel is having a frill day. I'm telling you, friends. That's what I've been writing since morning. This book I'm writing. God just began to download another session into my spirit. And I began to write. Today we are seeing that people all right, are, are replacing, you understand, sound biblical teaching with, you understand, life coaching. Almost every pastor today is a life coach, you know, uh, uh, you know, teacher. What is going on in the body of Christ? Where is the place where we sit, we abide, amen, until the Holy Spirit removes the veil and we begin to gain insight into the word of God and then we begin to pray. Friends, I want to pray till Jesus comes. 1991 I was in school the Lord said to me pray as if nobody is praying don't let your prayer be determined or dependent on somebody else pray as if no one is praying and that has become you understand my, my watchword and my you know my, my value system to the things of the spirit I don't wait for people I don't wait you see when I come I come I just I just I don't need to wait who is coming in who, no 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 I, I'm here to transact business with heaven and if you're there you can connect amen you connect with me we journey together I'm not waiting I'm what am I what am I waiting for what am I waiting for I'm not transacting business with you I'm transacting business with heaven and if your heart is also pursuing and seeking amen you will connect you say ah that crazy guy is, is, is awake again. Let's connect with him. Let's go. Amen. A luta continua. The struggle continue. We're struggling to see, amen, that the things of God, the will of God, the intentions of God, the counsels of God becomes manifest. 70 years. 70 years, friends. 70. Don't forget. If there's anything you need to remember today is what I'm saying right now. 70 years, Daniel, we're tracking. I read by the books. He was reading. 
and that motivated him to go into prayer. You see, there are prayers that God will respond to when it's by the script, when it's by the script. Not the one that is coming from your brain, not the one that, you know, your mind and your emotion cooked up. You see, that's the kind of prayer we see today. It's, it's in, in emotion, you know, we cook up all kinds of things and we weep and we cry, we hit ourselves. No, 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 no. He said, remind me of the things that I have spoken. Remind him of his word. Call him to remembrance. This is what your word says. As it is written. Jesus quoted the scripture. It is written Satan. It is written Satan. It is written Satan. Four times he declared it is written. Well, what defines your prayer life? What establishes your prayer life? On what foundation is your prayer built upon? You have to come to this conclusion that if you can't pray, you rather die because you are as good as dead. Prayer is where, amen, you get to have life. When you pray, amen, you leave that place of prayer with fresh life, fresh perspective, fresh understanding. New reality. Wisdom is increasing you. Knowledge, hallelujah, get to increase in you. Of the increase of his government and kingdom and peace and righteousness, there shall be no end. God is looking for a generation who will come into this order of life. I've been praying the word of God. For close to three decades. Just praying what is in the word of God. Oftentimes we don't know how to pray. We don't know what to do. Go into the word of God. I mean this is prayer. This is prayer Paul was establishing here. I'm praying that out of his glorious riches. He may strengthen you. Do you need strength in your inner man? Of course I do. I do. I don't know about you. I need, I need my spirit to be strengthened. I need my soul all right, to come to submission. I need my flesh to bow the knees. I don't want my soul, amen, regulating and determining, amen, what, what I'm supposed to do, all right, where I'm supposed to go. No, I want to bring myself under, amen, the influence and the government of the king of kings. People talking kingdom, but their life does not reflect, amen, obedience. Their life does not reflect submission. And they're forever talking kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I'm wondering, which kingdom are you talking about? Which kingdom? You're promoting division in the body of Christ and you're talking kingdom. Which kingdom are you talking about? You must have a different kingdom you're talking about. The level of seduction, the level of deception today in the body of Christ, I tell you, is beyond a realm that if you are not highly discerning, you won't see it. You won't see it. The level of deception, the, 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 the quality of deception today in the body of Christ, you won't see it. If your eyes have not been calibrated, if your mind has not been really been awakened to truth, that's why they say morning by morning, morning by morning. If you depend on the prayer of two days ago, three days ago, you know, to carry on today, you're going to be at default. You're going to be in a, in a dif dif difficult place. Hallelujah. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you. Strengthen you. See, before you can strengthen others, you need to strengthen yourself. The Lord said to Peter, all right, this is what the devil has planned for you, Peter. <laughs> but when you stand, I need you to strengthen your brothers. You cannot strengthen others, amen, from a place of weakness. Oh. You cannot strengthen others from a place, amen, of weakness. From a place that is disadvantaged. From a place of blindness. From a place of laziness. You cannot strengthen others. I pray that he may strengthen. If the Bible says you need strength, you better believe that you need strength. And listen to this. You can only measure, amen, something by the standard of others. You can't measure something, amen, by the same quality of the standard of what you have. No. How do you know? 
How do you know you're going to need strength if you don't have an understanding of what is coming before you? If you don't know, amen, yes, you know, the kind of person you're going to fight. How do you know how to train? How do you know the kind of weapon to use? Are you getting it? Many of us are going to fight the devil, you know, presuming. We're presuming. Ah, this one I can finish him. Uh, and then you go, he defeats you because, amen, you, you, you took him for granted. You took the field for granted. You took the battle for granted. You presume I can go with this. It's like the children of Israel. They were doing their own thing, living their own life. Then they wake up one morning and say, This Philistine, we will finish them. Go get the ark. <laughs> go bring the ark. We are the custodian of the priesthood. We have what it takes. We will finish them. Did you see how the, how the enemy amen, shut, shut our mouth during COVID 19? The church was made like it's just a normal common institution without power, without a voice. And the people who did that, they are still brewing another one. It's coming. But this time around, we will be ready. And that's why God is training us. He's training us. God is training. He said, Gideon, bring them. Let me train them for you. They don't know what is coming. Bring them to the waters. Let me train them. Let me see how they drink. Let's see how disciplined these armies are that you have raised. 30,000 of them, yeah? You go to that crusade, you see, they say 100,000 people gather. That 100, 500,000 is all cloudy and rowdy, but no power, no discipline. They are in discipline. Out of 33,000, 30,000 go back home. <laughs> oh my word. Friends, God is emphasizing, amen, on, on quality in this season as much as we want quantity. Did you hear what I said? I never said we don't want quantity. After all, we want to save the world. We want every human being to be saved. But those people, the people that God is going to use, amen, to bring the deliverance are not going to be, amen, just kind of ordinary people. No. The Bible call, you know, them, amen, the men of David. Men from the household of Abraham. 318 men. Under Abakayado. There's a quality that we are looking for, that we are seeking for. If we, have, if we have not seen that quality, friends, we're not going to stop. We will continue to raise the bar. You know, some people will say, no, you, you, you raise the bar too high. You, you raise the standard too high. So we have not even begun to raise the bar. Many are called. Few are chosen. That scripture is not me. Accept your righteousness. Accept your, your, your righteousness. Your idea of prayer. Exceed that of the Pharisee. You have no part in this thing, friends. I have no part. So it's not just about you. Even me, I have no part. So I cannot just be a preacher, a declarer of these things. And my life is not aligning. No, that would be hypocrisy. And I'll be the first that God will reject. You understand this? God is no respecter of man. You can be a bishop. You can be the archbishop. You can be the archpope. You can be God knows what. If your life does not reflect the quality of what they are looking for as a standard, as a benchmark to what is required in this new day, you're not entering. That's, what Paul, that's why Paul said, I'm, af I'm afraid lest I have brought everybody to understand this, this thing and I myself be a castaway. Are you seeing, friends? This is how we engage the place of prayer. It's a serious business. Prayer must awaken you to the reality of the sound of heaven. You know, yesterday, we had, you know, some storms and, and thunder here, you know, uh, in, in County here. I'm telling you, there was this massive thunder sound I said to myself, Lord Jesus. I mean, I was scared. I can imagine kids listening to that thing. And I said to myself, 
This is just a reminder of the prophetic sound of his coming. You know, it, it's so it's so massive and sound. I know, you know, the city of Johannesburg, you know, is used to, they are used to that kind of sound here. I remember when I was here in Joburg, I mean, I used to like this thunder. And then the rain is, you know, very minimal. But, you know, the lightning and the thundering. I said, Lord, can you be saying something to this city, all right, that you're not happy with the condition, with the lifestyle of the people here? Because all people are doing here is to chase money, is to chase gold. It's a city of gold. That's why they have forgotten God. If you're living in places like here, you have, to, you have to do 10 times better. You have to be tracking God. Because you can, you can be easily you know, wrapped into the hustle and the bustle while you forget God. And then Sunday morning, you just go to appease your soul. Say, well, I went to church. <laughs> I went to church. I went to church. Meanwhile, the wrath of God is upon you. Because the wrath of God is already on the land. I mean, it was heavy. And I'm saying, God, have mercy. So you can imagine the sound of his coming. You can imagine how it will be on that day when the angels really begin to literally, amen, blow the sound of awakening. And I know in the, in the idea of the apostolic and the kingdom community we have today, we've, we've turned everything to symbolism. So, well, that sound is just a symbol. Well, I don't think the sound is just a symbol. I think there's going to really be a blast. I believe that there's going to be a shake in a blast. I was afraid yesterday night with that sound everything was shaking I'm like God almighty have mercy oh friends that we will truly be awakened that we will not just be captured you know by the hustle and the bustle I said, Nehemiah was, excuse me, yes, Nehemiah and, and Daniel were in the midst. They were in the midst of Babylon. So don't tell me you're busy. I know you're busy. I know you're working. I know you've got a career. I also have a career. I've been awake since 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I've been awake. I've been writing since 2 a.m. Working. I had to tell myself, I said, stop now. You just have you just need to go and get yourself ready to broadcast, or else I would have just continued. That's when the spirit of you know of a scribe follow me. Eight hours I can sit down, I'm writing. So I know you're busy, but I'm also busy. But we say in the midst of this business, amen. Let's not become desensitized because that's the strategy of Babylon. They will keep you busy, keep you working until they desensitize you. So all you are left with, amen, is a podcast. <laughs> all you are left with, amen, is God knows what of God knows who. You're just barely surviving. All you are left with, amen, is just, you know, some motivation. Like I said, it's NLP. And the enemy, do you know there is a platform, listen to this, there's a platform called, you know, Mind Valley. I've been there several times because when I, when I wanted to take the course, you know, on a life coach, you know, I was also invited by Mind Valley, you know, just to, you know, check their courses. And um, in fact, I think they gave me some free courses, all right, before I make up my mind. My word, when I checked the list, when I was checking, you know, the different topics and the different people that were engaging in this thing, I said to myself, Jesus Christ, what a strategy to capture the mind of innocent people in the name of looking for healing, in the name of looking for deliverance, in the name of, you know, you know, finding your true self, in the name of achieving something. The church has got work to do. The devil is far ahead of the church. 
And after, fin you know, finally making up my mind, know that I was going to go for another, you know, uh, uh, you know, another course, all right, on on this concept of, you know, life coaching. Because I wanted to know what is this thing about life coaching. And the Lord said to me, these people don't have any life in them. They are coaching people to hell. And please, hear me well. I'm not saying those who are doing it have got, you know, some of our disciples who are into life coaching. I know people, are, I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying open your eyes. Open your mind. Listen, if you're not a spiritual person and you're doing life coaching, you would have thought, well, this is, this is it. You know why you would have thought that? Because you're carnal. But if you're spiritually awakened, if you're truly spiritually awakened, you will know that ah, this thing is from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This thing will never bring amen, true healing to the life of the people. It will pacify them. It will give them a sense of, you know, you know, a, 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 a validity because that's the whole essence, all right? It's about me. Make me feel good. Make me feel important. Make me... Now, a man that God is breaking, a woman that God wants to break at down, break at down, so they can walk, start again from her life, will not accept anything, all right, that life coaching is saying. Because life coaching is about you taking your life. It's about, you, you know what I mean, taking your life. You, you owning your own thing. You've been able to do what you want to do. And if anything gets across your way, there are principles that help you to get rid of them. Even if it's your wife or your husband, you understand? Even if it's your kid, without feeling guilty. It's your life. It's about you. <laughs> that is true. But there's the flip side. There's a flip side. Sometimes God will put you in a situation uh, for 13 years. Amen. Yes, that you're crying, I want to leave. And God says, stay there. Because I'm not done with you. Stay there in that situation. Five years, stay there. I'm not done with you. But it's a painful place. It's a breaking place. It's a place where they're trashing you. It's a place where they're using circumstance. Amen. Yes. To bring you to the end of yourself. In other times when God wants to deal with you. God doesn't send the devil. He sends people into your life. <laughs> Whenever God wants to deal with you. Particularly if he's got an interest in your life. He sends people into your life. Listen to the listen to my, listen to what I'm about to say. Not every failed marriage comes from a position because somebody did wrong or somebody didn't get it right. Sometimes God uses another person in a relationship to bring you to the place of humility so that the next thing God wants to do in your life, you are ready for it. Our idea, even me, I mean, I was teaching all kinds of things. My idea of marriage changed. And God plunged me into a situation. I'm like, God, take me out of this. I'm going to die. God says, stay there until I'm done with you. So you see, one size does not fit all. Our idea and doctrines and teachings and all of this thing. When it comes to experience and the dealings of God, I'm telling you, God is sovereign. I saw the sovereign hand of God. People who don't know these things, they will wake up tomorrow, open their mouth, stand on one doctrine that they don't, they don't even know, they don't practice, and they want to condemn you. We have to understand what God wants to do. We have to understand what God is doing. The days ahead of us are not like the days behind us. Let me repeat it. The days ahead of us are not like the days before us. We have not been through this path before. Many of the things that God is leading us through and God is doing in our life, there are things right now God is harvesting out of your life. He's literally taking them. And you think you need a life coach to bring you into a place of acceptance. <laughs> you joke. I'm, I'm balancing what I'm saying. Lest you think I'm castigating, all right? No, life coaching is a big business. It's a big business. A lot of people are running into it. And it's good. 
but it's good if you understand if you're mature if you understand what god amen wants you amen to do and to learn through those principles i went there i learned it and i saw it confirms to me the things that i've been teaching the things god has been speaking to me and that's why you're a man of god you're a woman of god you're listening to me or you have a desire for the things of God. Please, I beg of you, it's time we come together and bring, listen, I'm not talking about just Bible school material. I'm talking about real material. Of course, Bible Bible material, but that, I mean, these people have taken over the corporate world. Corporate world will invite people who are into life coaching. Come and teach our people. Come and, because people are traumatized. People, I mean, excuse me, you need to change your material of your idea of Bible school to something you can take into the corporate world. When I saw that, I said to myself, God Almighty, even my material, I need to change the pattern of writing because I know I've got materials that is needed in the corporate world. We need to be able to develop our own certified you know qualified material to teach people who are into banking to teach who are into insurance to teach amen nurses to teach you know professionals many of the people are into life coaching they are all most of them are into eastern religion many of them are worshiping Baal. they are worshiping bulls they are worshiping all kinds of things. They package the thing and it sounds nice in English. Sell it to you, man of God. And you buy yourself, now I'm certified life coach. Fully yourself. Fully yourself. Are you getting this? It's time we get a wake up call. Friends, there's work to be done. There is work to be done. Daniel was relevant. How do we teach our children? How to have, amen, understanding. How to live a life, amen, that is not bullied, that is not captured, that is not, amen, peer pressure. How do we do that? How do we teach our sisters and our brothers, amen, how to stand tall in times of crisis, not to bow, not to give in, not to, not to be, amen, captured and be capitulated by the lies of the enemy. We need sound biblical teaching. We need to bring leaders. Where are the, where are the teachers in the body of Christ? So that by the time we hear this thing, we are fired up to go back to pray. Zababa, Kalamo. That's what that's what sound teaching must do. A sound teaching must lead you back to the place of prayer. I could remember back in the days when we listened to Kenneth Egan. Back in the day, my God, I could remember. I will walk through my kitchen, walk through my bathroom, and I was decreeing and proclaiming things. The man was just a teacher, but that teaching led me to the place of prayer. When I listen to Makambi, his teaching led me to the place of prayer. And so many, all right, back there in the charismatic move, you understand? Yes, I, I came out of that move. I'm not throwing the baby and the water away. That thing taught me a lot of things about faith, about, you know, prosperity before they took it overboard. You understand? God still have teachers in the house. We need teachers in the house. Now people screaming kingdom, apostolic, but they don't even know what you're talking about. That is my frustration today. You look at their life, it's zero. You look at their character, it's zero. But they are the ones saying kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. But they have no zero prayer life. Don't you know kingdom is about the person? Kingdom is about the nature. Kingdom is not just doctrine. In kingdom doctrine is translated to a lifestyle it's a life of a person kingdom equals Christ's life have you seen a kingdom without a king you go to a kingdom and all you can see all right, is the beauty of Bahrain is the beauty of you know uh, Saudi Arabia and you are just wowed by the tall buildings remember that place 50 years ago 60 years ago was a desert it took a king to change the kingdom 
And imagine you go to you go to you know the kingdom of Bahrain, and all you're looking is taking picture around, and they said they said to you, the king is giving you an audience. Would you like to see the king? And you say, King, ah, no. I think I, I think I just want to see you know the, the beauty of this. I, I just want to keep taking picture. Won't you be called a fool? The one who built that place is inviting you. <laughs> hey, we want to go to Dubai. Somebody built Dubai. Dubai was not built by itself. All that America represents, amen, yes, is summarized in the president. And they said the president wanted to see, say, no, no, no. I want to go visit that place. I want to visit that place. I want. Won't you be a fool? That's what we're doing in the kingdom. We're quick to talk about the things of the kingdom, but we have no knowledge of the king on the throne. I pray that your heart will be steadfast. My heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. We've, we've checked the scripture last week. I'm bringing it up again. Awake, awake, my glory, awake. All oh, heart and lay awake. You can't be awake to just singing. It's to somebody. This, this song is to somebody. This awakening is to somebody. It's, it's, it's not just to a thing. They know my hand, but they don't know my face, he says. They want my glory, but they don't want my person. They want my majesty, but they don't want my face. Is that what you're looking for? Your face, David said, I was sick. I want to seek him, not the things that represent him. Did you hear me? That is my own definition. That is my own philosophy of the kingdom. I want to seek him. It's him. It is him. Not just it. Not just them. I want to know him. Paul said, that's my prayer. That's my longing. That's my desire. I want to know Christ. You know what? You know why people don't want to know Christ? You know why we don't prioritize knowing Christ? Because we do not have an idea of the majesty. Of the majesty. Before we even talk about the dominion of the majesty. Isaiah described, described in this way. He said the trail of his robe filled the temple. I give you that to just imagine for a few minutes. <laughs> The idea of Christ that has been painted, that has been, you know, projected to us has done more damage to us today than we will ever believe. The Sunday school Jesus, those pictures that were painted by, you know, Da Vinci, the picture of Jesus painted by Da Vinci, and the ones that, you know, the Roman Catholic Church has been projecting, the idea that all right, has been promoted of who Jesus is by the charismatic and other move has done more damage and is still doing damage in understanding the majesty of this Jesus Christ. I can't tell you that I have fully known him. I was listening to brother John, John Lennox yesterday. You know, that's a professor of chemistry. Professor of chemistry, professor of physics, professor of maths. John Lennox. I love, I love to listen to the man. But he was talking about how his father led him into, you know, loving scripture, loving the word of God. And now he was able to challenge professors 
who said you this your Jesus thing if you want a career in science you've got to throw this Jesus thing away or else this this Jesus thing is gonna cripple your mind you will not be able to understand things and you're gonna be you're gonna make shipwreck of of your career you say I challenge them He was 19 years old then. And I'm saying to myself, Jesus, he is a scientist. I mean, this man he studied everything. He's up there, but his heart is still searching. What's wrong with you? What could be wrong with me? He must have found something. It's like the parable that Jesus told. When you find a treasure in a piece of land, and you know what that treasure is and worth. The scripture says the man goes back and he sells everything that he owns. He sells everything to buy that piece of land. <laughs> I put it to you. We have not found the treasure. That's why we are still holding on to other things that we have. If you have found that land with a treasure... I tell you, you will sell everything. You will sell everything to buy that piece of land. It's not the land you're buying. It is what is embedded in the land. It is what is planted in the land. You see, friends? I pray that this understanding would dawn on us. That God will open our eyes let me finish that in Ephesians 3. That God will open our eyes of understanding. That we will have a cry. That we will have amen, an awakening. He said, I pray. I'm taking Ephesians 3, 16 again. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner man. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. I pray that you being rooted and being established, being established in love, may have power power together with all with all the lord's people is not meant just for some you know exclusive you know uh, uh, preserve it's not meant for just you know the the bishop or the apostle or the act pope you understand it's not meant for some you know you know i, I don't know whatever title we give give ourselves today I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together, may have power together with all the lost holy people. That's a qualification. Holiness. To grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep, how high, how wide, how deep, hallelujah. To grasp how wide, amen. Yes, how long, you understand? Yes, how deep, how high, come on. Yes, how high, how long, how wide, how deep, amen. And to know this love that surpasses. I mean, it's like when I get to this point, I can't just go on. That surpasses this love. You see, your, my idea, your idea of love, sometimes is what does the damage because when you say love there are images that come to your mind there are belief systems there are you know things that come to your mind and those things they don't do justice to the love of god the love of god is beyond just an emotion it's beyond just a feeling it's just it be, it's beyond just oh To know this love that surpasses all knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. You see, it is that love that leads us to the measure of the fullness. The fu I mean, fullness of God, Paul? Is that, is, is, is that real? Can, is that possible? Measure of the fullness of God. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. Through all generation. This is what we are seeking for father. This is what holy men of old found. This is how they discover their path. And this is the same path we want. We want to be filled. With all measure. We want our life to become the fullness of the measure of the Godhead 
We want to be awakening our spirit daily, being branded, being built up, being equipped, being motivated towards that dimension of the full measure that we may be strengthened in our inner man. When you are strengthened in your inner man, there is nothing that comes your way that you cannot engage. There is no circumstance. You know, we go through life pressure and it's like we're going to capitulate, we're going to bow. It's like that thing is going to break us. I mean, I went through things that almost break me, break me. If not for the grace of God and the prayer of saints and me believing that God can bring me out of this, that thing, I would have been drowned. I would have been swallowed up. Because that's what the pressures of life can do. The pressures of life can swallow you. But if your spirit, and this is me who pray, so I can imagine those who don't pray. That's why we go for the alternative. That's why the church is going for the alternative. That's why today we have you know, more psychic amen, in the church than prophets. We have more psychic in the church. Witchcraft has taken over. People seeking to manipulate you and seek to manipulate all kinds of things in the name of God. Every time I see my spirit get vexed. People using Christianity to, to project witchcraft. Using gift to project witchcraft. Using talent to project witchcraft. When you know the word of God, you feel liberated. You feel free. You don't feel obligated. You do things out of love and out of truth. You don't come through the back door. You don't come through the window. You don't engage Jesus in the night. Friends, what we're talking about is a company of people that God will fill with a different kind of spirit. The Bible says Caleb and Joshua had a different kind of spirit. This is the reason why God could use them in their time, in their generation. We want God to move in our time. We want the fire to fall on the altar. We have to present to God a different kind of a spirit. A spirit of faith. A spirit that believes. A spirit that is willing to let go. And allow God to have his way. A spirit that can wait. Daniel said, I understood by the books. A spirit that understands. And is seeking understanding of God's word. That God's word is not something you do when you want to preach or when you want to impress somebody. It's something you engage to be changed. You live in the atmosphere of the word of God until the reality of your inner life, not your soul life, not your, not your physical material driven life, amen, controls you your, until your spirit rises and take charge. You don't stop. This is, this is how we know prophets. This is how we know people of God. As they are praying, God speaks to them. As they respond, things begin to happen in the realms. It's time. Don't limit yourself. Your prayer can change the realm. Your prayer can change your nation. Your prayer can change your community. You know why? Because your prayer is coming out of a pure heart. Because your prayer is coming out of, yes, a heart of truth and honesty. It's coming from a place of integrity. You're not praying out of fear. You're not praying out of anxiety. You're not praying out of a selfish you know, ambition. You're not praying because you want to prove a point. You're praying because you have a burden. You have a passion. You have a longing for God and the things of God. One of the things that qualifies an effective prayer life is motive. 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 is motive. You have a wrong motive, forget prayer. 
They think I'm a ministry. Forget it. Because God is not going to answer that prayer. You cannot deceive God in the place of prayer. I cannot. You see, that's why I keep telling you. I cannot teach you. I cannot, you know, teach you how to pray by you listening to me pray. I can only teach you how to pray by me showing you the principles. So that when you learn this principle, you go into your closet. You are unique. You have a unique relationship with God. But, but that's, what we, that's why we come to school. We learn so we can then go and apply amen, our personal unique relationship with God. But if you want to hear me pray, for you to pray, that itself is witchcraft. Do you know that? Because I'm imposing on you what God, amen, has not ordained. When we pray, we pray generally, that's different. But we need to be taught. The disciples say, teach us. Teach us how to pray. And I've been doing this for years. When you truly grab the spirit of what we're doing, by the time I'm done, you go into the place of prayer. That thing will flow out. Out of the garden of Eden, flow four heads of river. The four heads will be flowing out of you, unsolicited. You'll be wondering. In fact, you'll be looking at yourself. Am I the one praying? Yes. Because you have been empowered by the Spirit. Hallelujah. You have been infused with life. The thing will be flowing out. Even the ones you never thought will just be flowing out of you. You'll be like, wow, 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 wow. Yes. Yes. The kingdom of God is coming near you, friends. The day of the Lord is upon us. God is demanding that once again we redress. As we undress from yesterday's ideas and belief system. We have been ushered into a new day. We are required to have a new gear. We are required to have a new understanding, a new operating system. We, are desired, we, are, we have been demanded to come up higher. So they can show us new paradigms, new patterns, new value system. There are realms in the spirit that we have to learn. That's why we come to the school of the spirit. Every height in the things of God, we have to learn, sit and learn them anew afresh so we can be accustomed to the operational system of that realm. And once we are done with that and we're able to use them, amen, yes, until the season elapses, we have to go back again into the spirit and they will have to take us through another learning, through another class, yes. It's from glory to glory. Each realm of glory requires a new concept of learning and teaching. Each realm of glory requires a new operating system. You have to see this. You have to know this. You have to embrace this. It must become part and parcel. That's why nobody can say they've arrived. Your place of arrival is where somebody just left. <laughs> Your place of arrival is where a generation just left. A company, a tribe just left. That's why there is always, you know, a people are they, are, you know, before you better than you. And there's always people behind you that you're better off. But you can never say you've arrived. You can only arrive at the point and place that they have brought you into. It's not your end. It's not your end. It's not your end. Morning by morning. Morning by morning, he awakens me. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the words that sustains the weary. He awakens me morning by morning. Awakens my ears to listen. Like one being instructed. May he instruct you this morning as he instruct me. May we be quick to adjust to his instruction. May we be quick to align to his instruction. May we be quick to respond to his instruction. God is a God of instruction. He likes to give instruction. 
He gave the first man instruction. As he gave the first man, he gave a man, the second man, the last man, the instruction. That's why Jesus never did anything without the instruction of his father. Adam was given instruction. The first ever instruction they gave to him, he goofed. He messed it up. So don't think, well, I'm, I'm spirit. I just flow. You don't flow. The flow of the spirit is based on the instruction of God. He wants to instruct you about today. He wants to instruct you about things that are yet to come. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will instruct you. He will guide you into all truth. For we don't know how to pray. But there's one who can teach us how to pray. He's our paracleto. He's our advocate. He's the chief intercessor. He's the spirit of Christ. There are things it will, it will stir your heart to pray to us. Yes. There are things he will command you to command. He said to the prophet, prophesy upon the dry bones. Speak to them. It's an instruction. <clears throat> what be that person that speaks when God has not spoken? That engages when God has not said go? Presumption and assumption has led the church to the place of weakness. God awaken before us and to us again the voice of a prophetic spirit. Because prophets are the ones that bring the instructions of heaven to us. Now these charlatans and thieves and rogues we have send us oh God prophetic voice bring us to a place where we can receive he said to Gideon bring them to the water let me show you how things are done father we ask of you in this new day that Lord we will not sleep the sleep of death that we will truly be awakened to the instructions of your spirit it's a brand new day instruct us like the sons of Issachar so the nation can know what to do we need instruction lead us lead us regarding our nation teach us how to pray regarding our city regarding our community our family teach us what to pray regarding our children our sons and daughters teach us how to pray for our wives for our husbands teach us how to pray for your church your body teach us the kind of prayer that the apostles require in this season that the prophets require in this season oh god teach us how to engage our shepherds in the place of prayer Teach us how to pray, yes, for the teachers, for the evangelists, oh God. Teach us. Show us. Teach us how to pray for our business because they represent your intention. How do you run a business that God has no stake in? How do you run a career that God is not the one motivating? What are you building a career for? Who are you building it for? If not for the kingdom. If it's for the kingdom, then you must be getting instruction from him. Then he must be the one giving you, amen, the final word, the final direction. He must be the one giving you the design and the architecture earlier of what you need to do. Teach us, Father. Teach us how to run that church. The church does not belong to us. The church belongs to, to you. The church are your people. The people are yours our pastors so they will know how to preach so they will know how to identify yes witchcraft in the church they will know how to identify wizards in the church they will know how to see open their eyes of understanding the men of God preaching today and they collapse on the pulpit because there are all kinds of spirit that comes to the house and test their power Oh, Father, take the spirit of slumber away from your church. May our leaders go back into the place of prayer. So when the witches and wizards and the paths of darkness and these people who are into all kinds of ancestral spirit come to church, I'm telling you what is going on, particularly in, in the southern African churches. 
They come to church. They say, you think you're a Christian. You think you're, your God is powerful. And God help you, you are not standing well. They are projecting things as you are preaching. And you start feeling dizzy. You start feeling lustful. You, start, you think men of God who are falling into loss, you think it's just by accident. Some of them were preyed upon by all kinds of spirit because they were not awakened. They were not amen, alive in the spirit. The devil destroyed their ministry. They plant a woman there to destroy them. The devil will, will plan and, and project women into your life if they know you're powerful, they know you have what it takes. They say, let's do damage before this guy does damage to us. God has helped me, several of them. We've seen them and we brought them down. We're still bringing them down. You won't bring me down. You can't bring me down. I'm standing on the rock. My house is built solidly on Christ. I don't give in to manipulation. I don't give in to the lies of the enemy. I don't give in to all kinds of, you know, spirit. No. You can't control me by money. You can't control me by feelings. No, 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 no. God has helped me and he's still helping me and he will continue to help me. What am I saying? We expose the spirit that wants to quench the fire on our altar. He said the fire must not go off from the altar. It must burn day and night. The fire must not go off the altar. It must burn day and night. Day and night. When you don't feel like prayer, go into prayer. That's the best time to pray. When you pray, you start opening the heavens upon your head. The heavens must stop being brass over your head. The land must stop being like iron. Amen. You've got to break through in the spirit and hear the voice of God and break forth and proclaim the desires of God upon the land. You hearing me? I know you're hearing me. The sovereign Lord has given to me a well instructed. You see the word I'm talking about? God instructs us. He told Philip where to go, how to be positioned. Go, hallelujah, to the way of Gaza. Stay there. A, a chariot is coming. Engage the chariot. So, go to the house of one called Aeneas. He knows what to do. God is a God of instruction. When last did you hear an instruction from him? When last did he speak to you from his word? When last did you obey and you see him move? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of instruction. That's why he gave us his spirit. So he can speak to us. So he can communicate to us. In this book I'm writing, I'm describing. You know, the trinity of man. You see, the soul is the point and place where we get to hear. We receive instruction. We receive direction and all of that. We make a decision. The body basically is a vehicle that takes us there. So what, what happened to the spirit? The spirit is concerned with picking the signal, relating with God, hearing the mind of God, knowing the will of God, and passing that to the soul. But you see, in the fall, the spirit has been shut down, put aside. So the soul assumed position of power. So the soul continued to do his own thing. Hey, you know, buddy, go there, go there. The soul is bully. But now, listen, the spirit is restored. But the soul still assumes the same old position. You have to superimpose the authority and the government of your spirit upon your soul. That's why you need to fast. You hear me? That is why you need to fast because the soul does not easily bow. The soul is still rebellious. For, 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 for years, your soul has been controlled. The day you give your, your life to Jesus, you think the soul will just go into obedience. No, the soul's fighting back. No, I've been controlled. I've been in control of this house. I've been in control of your life all these years. Now you want to tell me that you're in charge. No, you have to make your soul comply. Re hear ye the voice of the Lord. That's why you need the message. Listen to what I'm saying. You need the cross. You need the message of the cross. You have thrown the message of the cross away. You better go and get it back. Because it's the message of the cross that causes your soul to comply. Go and sit down to all these 
carnal messages. You talk spirit, but you don't have the cross in your life. You're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. You talk kingdom, but you don't have cross in your life. I'm telling you, you go nowhere. We see no kingdom and we see no king. I preach kingdom. I've been preaching kingdom from, in fact, for almost 30 years. Now we've been talking kingdom. The only difference is our understanding of the kingdom is different from many out there. There's no kingdom without the cross. There's no kingdom without the crucified life. There's no kingdom, hallelujah, without circumcision. There's no kingdom without holiness. There's no kingdom without purity. There's no kingdom without honesty. You're preaching kingdom, but you're not a honest person. What kingdom are you preaching? Which kingdom are you representing? Uh huh. I like it when the word hits, it goes deep into your bones. That's how we save people. We don't save them by giving them, you know, things they want to hear. And tomorrow they will still come. The same people who are leaving tomorrow, they will still come back. Because they can't run away from the truth. It's the truth that sets you free. Awake. The sovereign Lord has given to me a well-instructed tongue to know. You have to know it. You can't make excuse. Oh, well, I don't know. I was, daddy, I didn't know. There's no excuse. You have to know the words that sustains the weary. It's not about you. It's about those who are weary. It's about those who are living their life as if, amen, they don't have a head. They don't have a shepherd. The, 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 the house has been scattered. The shepherds are, have, been, have, have been struck, amen. The sheep are scattered. They are weary. The nation needs leaders. But they are weary of the kind of leadership they are seeing. They are tired. You know, somebody was supposed to come and see me. This person was introduced. I mean, somebody introduced me to this person. I don't know her. I've never met her before. But when they told me about what she's been through with all kinds of men of God, I can understand when she decided to say, look, I, I don't think I want to see the man of God again. Wouldn't you relate? When people have been beating here and there, beating here and there, push here and there, push here and there. Some of them were manipulated to take money from them. I've never counseled anybody in my life that I collected money. That before I counsel you, you must put X, Y, Z or you must give me. I've never done it. I will never do it till Jesus come. And I'm not saying I don't want to be blessed. Of course I need money. I, but I have never placed money before ministry. Never. And people have taken that for granted. Yes. I know that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not naive. But I must say because people take me for granted. And then I do things that I know does not sit well with God and my own spirit. I rather prefer that somebody comes and say, man of God, I, I feel led, I feel inspired. I think this is what God will have me to do. And I'll receive it with thanksgiving. But I'll never manipulate people. People have gone to our website to download materials upon materials upon materials. Very few people come back to say thank you. But that doesn't stop me from doing what I need to be doing. You know what? Because God is my provider. When you make men your provider, men will benchmark how far you're going to go in the things of God. Men will determine how far God is going to bless you. I won't be surprised tomorrow somebody walk up to me and give me the key. You know the the key of a whole building and say man of god it's yours i won't be so it will not move me i'll be very grateful but it will not move me because i know i've done 10 times better than that for people he 
are waking me money by money. I want you to track the heart. Listen, there must be a generation, a generation, hallelujah, that is called the remnant. Not everybody is captured yet. You know, they had something in South Africa, you know, and they say, you know, uh, they, 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 they were trying to probe those who tried to capture South Africa in terms of, you know, the political and the economic system. Would you find out of those who were who were who, who were taken to the Zondo Commission? Hardly would you find one person that has been jailed. That's the world system. Let it not be the same in the church. Please don't be part of them that are captured. Don't let the church of Jesus be captured in your day. There are, there are charlatans today who have, who have assumed the position of authority in the body of Christ. Just because they have God knows what. Let it be said that when you and I open our mouth and we begin to pray, the fire literally falls from heaven as a sign of approval. They said, they said the God who answers by fire. Listen, it was a challenge. If he's bad, let him be God. If it is Baal, let him be God. Friends, today, Baal has taken over the church. You say, what do you mean? Baal is symbolized of the spirit of Mammon. Haven't you seen it in many of the stock exchange? You see boom in front of, you know, uh, you know the, the building. is a sign of Baal. a calf spirit but it's beyond just you know mammal that thing is into you know uh, uh, all kinds of perversion sexual perversion you see the church today everybody is sleeping with each other it's a spirit it's a spirit of bow men of God today are going to Sangoma they are going to all kinds of places I mean in the days of Saul the same Saul who banish witch, witchcraft from the land? The same soul now is going for the for the witch of Endom. Why? Because God will not speak to him again. There's no prophet to speak into his life again. There's nobody to speak because envy, pride, ungodliness, perversion, materialism has taken over the life of King Saul. Of King Saul. So don't be fooled. Saul was a king. But another demonic spirit took over his life. And pride will not allow him to bow the knees and cry to his God. He sent for the witch of Endor. That's what is going on today in the body of Christ. It's a spirit of witchcraft. It's a spirit of control. It's an evil spirit. They cast a spell on you. They cast a spell on you. You don't even know it. Friends, may God raise you up as an altar in this new day. If we're going to see a move of God again, have you seen how things just look like normal and everything just seems quiet? No, there's a war brewing. <laughs> Let me say this and I'll be gone. There's a war brewing in the spirit. <laughs> you know, they say before the, before the storm comes, before the rain comes, there's this, this sense of calm, cool, mellow. That's, that's how things are now in the spirit. No, but something is brewing. That's how it was yesterday. Before this storm and this thundering, everything just went cool, normal. Uh -huh. If you are wise, look up. You will see that the weather is changing. Something is happening. If you are a man or a woman of the spirit, when you look deep into the spirit, you can see something is about to happen. Can you see it? Can you feel it? That this is not this this quietness is abnormal. It's like is the charlatan just making noise because God is God is brewing something. 
and God is raising us earlier to prepare for him a warrior to prepare for him earlier men and women there is a warfare that is coming there's a warfare we've got to engage And I'm preparing you. I'm asking you get ready. Don't take things for granted. They say when they say when they say it's peace, it says suddenly destruction will come. You know, the Bible says, you know, on the day of Pentecost, everything was just normal. They were, in fact, they were sitting. Suddenly there was a wild wind. I want you to be in an attitude, in an atmosphere of praying. Engage yourself. Put yourself in some fast. Engage yourself in the word of God. Let your mind be focused. How did we start? Nehemiah was serving in the palace. But yet he was engaging in the palace of heaven. Excuse me, Daniel. And even Nehemiah. But I meant to say Daniel. Daniel was serving, hallelujah, the king. But yet, his mind, his thought, hallelujah, was engaged in the court of heaven. And he understood by the books. The same thing with Nehemiah. Can you see, this book came out of Babylon to go and build a kingdom of hallelujah you know assignment they came out of the palace they came out of babylon i mean babylon could not swallow them babylon could not change them my god babylon could not influence them they were in the midst of babylon but their life is in tune to heaven that's what we're looking for those are the generation we are looking for in this brand new day are you going to be part of the nehemiahs and the daniel and the Esthers, hallelujah, that no matter what is happening, you want to engage. Daniel said, I understood by the books. I understood by the books. And he put himself in prayer and fast. And God answered. And that brought out a whole nation out of, amen, the land of bondage, the land of, you understand, captivity. Come on. That's what we are looking for. This is the sound of heaven. This is the marching order for this brand new day. Are you going to be part of them? Are you going to be, hallelujah, yes, enroll in this army of men, of a remnant generation, that the Spirit of God, amen, is calling forth in this new day. It's warfare. Arise. Take your place. Take your place. Let your house be built. Let them build you. Let wisdom begin to construct in you the kind of competency and grace required to manifest God's prophetic intention in this day. Don't give an excuse. Morning by morning, he awakens my ears to listen to the instructions of God. This is the time, friends. This is the moment. Stand your ground. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you for a kingdom of priests that you are raising in this season. Our heart rejoices in you. We ask you once again, grant us the liberty of the spirit so we don't bow to the lies of the enemy. Grant us the wisdom, the grace, the understanding to know, yes, what is before us, what is coming, so we can be adequately ready and be prepared. You are not prepared until you know what is coming. You are not prepared until you have a sense of what is coming. I say you are not prepared until you know. Until you know. John said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. He knew what was coming. He understood what was coming. He received the memo. Hallelujah. You've got to know what is coming. You've got to know what is coming. Mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You've got to know what is coming, friends. You've got to see what is coming. You've got to be able to see it and know it. It's time to enroll yourself in the school of prayer. Pray until there's a shift. Pray until there's a shift. Pray until there's an awakening. Watch man. What is left of the night? Watch man. What is left of the night? Watch man reply. The morning has come. 
I'm reading a scripture. The morning has come. Also the night. If you will inquire, then inquire. Find it in Isaiah 21, 11. This is the voice of the watchman. This is the voice of the watchman. We proclaim and we declare that the name of the Lord shall be exalted in our day. We declare that the mountain of the house of God shall be built and shall be exalted above every other mountain. That in that day, this day men will say, come let us go up to the hill, to the mountain of the house of the God of Jacob. There he will instruct us. He will teach us his way. Friends, it's time. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name. Thank you, Father, for the utterance of the Spirit. Thank you for men and women, oh God, that you are raising in this season who will not be tired. Who will not be tired. Awaken us. Awaken us from our slumber. Help us to train men. The Bible says Abraham from his own household trained 318 men who went to fight four kings, four kings, and they conquered. <laughs> oh, I rest my case. I pray the sound of what God is brewing this season will become a reality in your life. Occupy till it comes. Don't be occupied and don't allow the enemy to preoccupy you. Take your place at the gate. You're a gatekeeper. Repairers of the wall you are. Position yourself on the wall, on the ramp. Build with one hand and let the weapon of war, hallelujah, be found in your other hand. Don't give the enemy any room or chance. And the zeal of the Lord shall accomplish these things. Father, we thank you. Honor and glory to your name. Thank you, Father, for the sound of a new day. We ask you, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciple. We want to pray. We want to pray. Enroll us in the school of prayer. Bring us into the place of your desire and demand. We honor you. We hear the sound, the sound of awakening. One runner will run to another and proclaim and declare that Babylon is captured. Of our son will hear no more. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning. God bless you. We appreciate everyone that has joined us this morning. May the Lord continue to empower you. Please do continue to pray for me so God can continue to you know, speak to us and we can continue to come and bring clarity and instruction to the body of Christ. Have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye.